Yeah, okay. man, I'm solid. I will say, since we know that that Letty bound all white people from magic, I'm hey. not a special Negro. Hey. I'm a magic Negro. Hey, man. <laughs> man, like man Larry, you just stole one of my lines, man. That was going to oh. be... <laughs> I was going to say, man, when she said that, I felt like, even though I know it's fake, even though I know it's not reality, I felt like the black people won one for a few minutes, man. When she's like, you white people would not have magic again for yeah. a few minutes. I felt special. I felt very special. Always special, man. That's what that's what that's why I think they always do this Hollywood thing where they have magic Negroes where black people just come in and fix all white people's problems in, in, in an hour and a half and then leave. It's because they don't have magic anymore, and we do. So they know they're like, oh, we gotta go find us a magic Negro. Well, so. 50, well 50, 50 Cent tried to tell them, Larry. 50 Cent tried to tell them we got the magic stick, but I guess they wasn't listening. <laughs> oh, they listen. They listen. That's why they try and lynch us to keep us away from them, to keep their oh, women away from Oh, them. my lord. Now, that Christina <laughs> Braithwaite. Mm. Yeah, man. Mm, mm, but I got to know how y'all uh, feel about her, you know. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you know we're gonna talk it up, my brother. Yeah. We we don't bring we don't bring out the heavy guns such as yourself for nothing. Oh, <laughs> for nothing. I'm so ready. let me let me right. say what's up to everybody so we can go ahead and dive on into this thing an hour. Ladies and gentlemen, all we're talking about is what is about to be a, a critically acclaimed award-winning show, Lovecraft Country, the finale. And y'all know this brother right here. This is Brandon from Just My Reviews. Subscribe to this channel. Link is in the description. It is Lovecraft Country. It is episode 10, the finale. And before we dive in, let me give the people a little context. And then we're just going to dive on in this thing. Like we we doing some nudist events in the Alps. Take a look at this. And together, we're going to use it to protect our family. Every person in the world change everything mm. all right we're gonna give it to Ooh. my guest first brandon summarize Myself. the finale tell us your thoughts and your opinions my brother and uh wakanda forever yes sir yes sir wakanda forever <laughs> well guys killmonger the right the the true and righteous ruler oh, of wakanda, Larry, wakanda ain't nobody asked you man <laughs> Dang, let it go yeah but no uh, going into this just like you showed the trailer you know i was very very excited i was like man it's gonna be epic it's about to go down we got the book of names it's gonna be all types of magical powers and stuff like that you know but i was let down uh, <gasps> to be honest with you what? i was I was a bit disappointed. It was still a great episode. Um, you know, there was a lot that was revealed and kind of pulled on my heartstrings. And oh, I did dude. enjoy, you know, a dynamic between two certain characters that have been kind of clashing throughout the whole season. But when the credits hit, you know, it, it just, it, the final showdown was a bit anticlimactic for me. And I walked away entertained, but wanting more. And I, I did see the episode twice, or at least twice. And I did like it a lot more the second time than the first time, but I still wanted more in the end. And um, you know, I I I, I, I was I, I left starving. You know, I wasn't, mm. I wasn't fed. I, I was oh still hungry. Look, look, look <laughs> that, that is so profound. I'm about to take a note because I, I, I got I got to come back and probe you, Larry. Give us your synopsis. How you felt? What did this thing do for you? And all the emotions you had watching the finale but let me let me just first say i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to go with b avery for a minute on this one oh i'm gonna no. have to call b avery eric benet he's like he's like eric benet you get holly berry and then a few months later you're like yeah whatever i'm good it's real it's been cool but i'm good i didn't get enough i'm not fed holly berry didn't feed me come on yes. bro <laughs> Hey, I mean, you know I'm what? Sure, you know, you know, I, you know that I was that was. You can't get mad at a brother when he compares you to Eric Bidet, who has Holly Berry. So, <laughs> I give it that. I give it that. I mean, may, maybe he's maybe he's Eric Bidet. He's seen Kim Kardashian and said Holly Berry too old. Nah. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> I forgot to do that. That's blasphemous, right there. <laughs> I'll say I love this episode, man. I thought it was fantastic. It was much more of a of a milder tone to it all. It had those moments like it, like we typically do, but it had a much more mild tone to it as a as a whole. But that last scene with Diana 
Woo! <laughs> Man, I was so fired up after that. I mean, as far as it leaving you wanting more, like you said, I was left wanting more. When I saw that, I was like, I want to know what's going to happen next season. I want to see Diana and Hippolyta travel in the universe as the, you know. So so I wanted to see what was going to happen, too. But more than me wanting to see more of what's going to happen in the future, I was confused. I just didn't understand how her character completely transitioned into some cold-blooded murderer. Which I'm not mad at her. I mean, Christina did deserve it, but there was a complete character shift out of nowhere. And I'm like, okay, where did this come from? I don't even think she, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't even think Dee knew who Christina was throughout the whole season. Have they ever met? Have they ever had any lines of dialogue between each other? So that I, I was just kind of, I was kind of lost there. She didn't need to know who she was. She was this Snow White, you know, this Snow White friggin' Aryan Nation looking white chick. So oh. she knew that she was evil. She knew what she saw under that rock and everything that had gone through that she was evil. And and so I I think here's here's what we can say. What what caused the character shift? We saw in the last couple episodes her best friend in the world, Emmett Till was murdered and she had to go and and, and live through the, tra the the tragedy of that. And then in the midst of all of that, everybody else is running around just doing whatever. And they just see to sort of leave her alone and, and she wanders off. And then that cop comes over there and, and puts a curse on her and she ends up getting attacked by those demon things. And then she ends up halfway turning into one, huh? The jigaboos. The jigaboos, right. She gets in turned into one of those things. And then she comes back and and they bring her back and then her arm is still jacked up so hippolyta gives her a friggin you know takes her to the future or something and gives her a bionic arm and so she she has all this sense of anger and frustration not just the white people but at magic as well and because then at the last scene she says something like they'll never learn and that's why she killed her she was like you can't leave this chick alive to, to figure out a way to come back she was she was like they'll never learn so i'm just gonna go ahead and do it right now and just and just squash her like a bug basically i mean I, I hate to nitpick but that's just another reason why i have a problem with the show or the last episode it's like for one i don't understand i mean through all the magical powers christina just has a bunch of rocks uh, laid on top of her i don't know how that happened randomly and why would they not just why would they just leave her there you know like i would have went and got mm. some boulders and mm -hmm. sea walked on her face or something like that but everything that you just lit, you just uh, listed that D went through, I agree with you one hundred percent. You know, she's she's been through a lot. Her dad died. Her mom, she felt like her mom abandoned her, and she was possessed by demons. Mm -hmm. But that still does not, for me at least, it still doesn't give me a reason why she would turn that way towards Christina. Because with all that being said, she didn't have that same mindset when she was in the car with the flashlight reading the book, and then the Shogoth showed up. I mean, it's just like she was still innocent little D. But as soon as the monster showed up, I don't know. It's like that possessed her and made her cold hearted. And that that leap right there, it just I, I don't know. I mean, it was cool. I liked it. And I want to see more of it. But that just that, that was kind of bad writing to me. Well, don't you think that this could have been the maturation of D starting from the last three episodes to this point? Because like you, you mentioned that, you know, her mom had kind of left her distant. Her dad was dead. And the mom even said to her during this episode, you know, things heal in time. And I'm paraphrasing here. Right. And D was still somewhat bitter because she felt like mom had abandoned her and her arm was messed up. Now, if you guys can remember, they did call Christina to try to fix D. And Christina basically said, no, I mean, the best I can do is a little bit of spells. And that's all I can really do. I'm not going to be able to change it forever. And maybe she was holding that grudge. Plus, that book that D was reading um, has some kind of a lineage to the story itself. So well, that was I, the book that Atticus brought back from the future. So right. that was that was so okay. she was at, that was the book that the Atticus brought back. So she was reading her own history. Right, right, you know? right. And and so that makes a little more sense. Right, and so to, to but even if that does make sense. It still doesn't. I'm with you on this part. It still doesn't make sense as to why Letty and the crew didn't kill Christina on the spot. 
Right. I, I, I think they didn't do it. Well, there's a couple reasons. One, story wise, they didn't do it so they can let D do it because they needed to show D with this new sense of herself and the, and her and her new sort of ruthlessness. They what? needed to do that story wise. But also, I think they didn't do it for themselves internally because they no longer felt that that she was a threat because they bound magic away from her. So she, okay. they no longer viewed her as a threat. So they figured she'll just leave her sitting there and she'll die on her own. Mm -hmm. you know? Man, I can't give you that one because the first thing you just listed, they, they didn't do it because they wanted D to do it. Like what? They, well, they, that's, they, that's not from them. I didn't think they wanted to. I don't think they left. I don't think Letty and them left her there so D can do it. I think the 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 writers left them there so D could do it. But wow. I think that I think the characters left her there because they no longer viewed her as a threat. But as but as we saw when when D went up there, D was like they'll never learn and just was like took her out. I mean, I I, I feel you there as far as um, they leaving her there uh, because she's no longer a threat. They have all the power. She doesn't. You know, but at the same time, to, I mean, some people feel like Christina is like a racist white supremacist. Some just think she's selfish. I think she's an evil racist white supremacist. You know, they don't like taking L's. Even if they did take the magic away from her, she's still a threat can come and stab you while you sleep or shoot you in the face or something like that. I mean, that's just like, you know, my, my mindset. But I, I don't know. I mean, I was just a bit disappointed there. Can I can I say something else that kind of has to do with D? Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Has, okay, if she has this robotic arm, why would they leave her in the in the car and not have her go up there and fight? You know, like, <laughs> I mean, now that's the one part I had issues like, with. Now that is something she, I had an issue with. Going around her just haymaking everybody, but she's in the car reading a book, and I'm. Just, I, I mean, you got a pet shogun here that you're not using. I mean, that I don't. I don't know. At the end, well, can we? I don't. I don't. I was going to talk about another episode, but. Like uh, no, no, go for it. Tie it in, brother. Okay. Tie it in. So the thing that bothered me, I think it was at the end of episode eight, to where um, they were uh, Lancaster and all the cops were shooting the house, and then the Shargoth came and protected everybody. So never in the last two episodes, they didn't use that beast or that monster for anything, no benefit at all. They just left them in the in the in the in the basement. Mm. And for, like, I mean, at the end of that episode, when it was revealed and they killed all the cops, I'm, I'm, I, they left us in the cliffhanger. You know, when Tick had the hand up there, like he was like a, like a little pet. I was like, yeah. man, at the very beginning of the next episode, I cannot see, I cannot wait to see the aftermath of this. Like, what was the reaction of all the people in the house? What was the reaction to all the cop cars and blood and bodies in the front? You know, where did the Shargoth go? Did it go back into the ground? Are they going to use it again? And that was so that was so badass and epic, but he just he never came back except to protect D from the car and growl, you know, with the moon in the back. And then that, that was a badass shot. It looked nice, it was cool imagery, but it was just a waste to me. So no we one saw, no we saw a little flash of it. Huh? We saw a little flash of it when uh when when the fox demon had connected all of them together. We saw a little flash of it where, where Atticus bound the, the monster to D. Right, right. I mean, like, we didn't get to see them use it as a weapon anymore. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, I mean, this dude can run through here and wreck shop, you know, but they just didn't use them for some reason. And that was kind of... Uh, I think part of that... I think part of it is because those things were never really designed, as far as I am, from my understanding, they they were never really designed as offensive weapons. They were defensive weapons. They were protectors, and they only came out when 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 the person who conjured them needed to be protected. And so uh, that's a fair point, I guess. But I mean, it's either because because when we first saw them, they weren't there to really attack anything they were i mean they were there to attack people but they were there to protect artem itself and so mm -hmm. when the when the sheriffs and tick and mantra or not mantras uh george got too close to artem those things came out to protect the the area around artem and then and that was it You're but right. every other time that we've seen them come out it's only been in defense of the person they're they're bound to mm -hmm. for a point but still the, the robot arm she should have used the arm to fight <laughs> the robot arm is dope. Yeah, that, that, yeah. 